how are you doing? This is Don Bosco. I write uh, stories for kids and we're in my writing studio, super cool books. Before we get started, let me give you a quick tour. Um, this is the super cool books logo. It's an S, C and a B. These, these are some of uh, my notebooks. I, re I write my stories uh, in these. This is my keyboard. It's a very special keyboard. Makes a very nice sound. This is the official Super Cool Books mug. If you come visit us, you will be able to get one for yourself. And this is my little friend. Say hello. Okay, so that's the end of the tour. On to serious business. Today I'll talk to you about my creative process, how I come up with ideas for my stories and I'll give you examples from the books that I've written so that you can pick up some inspiration and write your own stories too. And who knows, you might end up writing a best-selling book one day. Wouldn't that be super cool? For me, it's very important to enjoy myself when I'm writing a story and put in all kinds of ideas that feel really good to me. And if I manage to do that, um, when I'm done, I'll share my story with the world and people get a sense of that too. And I hope I can make the world a slightly better place through my stories. So for this session, all you need to do is relax Open up your imagination and enjoy yourself. This is Ghostly. It's one of the first books that I worked on. Um, this was created entirely at home with my two kids. We wrote the story. My sons did the illustrations and we got a printer to make copies of this. And it went out to the bookstores and it's in the libraries too. You can go look for a copy if you're interested. There was a very simple idea behind this book, which was to pack in everything around us and everything that my kids were telling me about based on their experience in school. So this story features uh, origami. It features ghost hunting because um, a lot of my son's friends were really interested in ghost stories and looking out for ghosts. It's a fantasy story because my son was reading a lot of fantasy books back then and there are a lot of school activities being featured in the book. So everything that my kids told me about, you know, about their experience in school, we kind of wrapped it all together and put it into this book. When we first started working on this, we didn't have enough story material for a whole book. And so we created this small little foldable story fanzine instead. So it's um, one sheet of A4 paper and we printed part of the story on both sides and then you make a slit in the middle and then you fold it up. And we printed this at home and my sons gave this out to their friends and people liked it enough that they wanted another part and another part and eventually we had enough to make up a book. And so the lesson is that you don't really need to work too hard to try and get your ideas. Just look around you and everything that you experience, everything that's a part of your life, you can just put it into your story. The next lesson is to create a really cool character. And that's what I did with my Sherlock Holmes series. I came up with this character a long time ago, like 15 years ago for a comic book that my friend wanted to make and I was to help him by writing the story. We didn't actually make the comic book but I went around and I told people about this character and this idea that I had and people actually said they would really like to read the story and I felt so encouraged that I actually put the book together, put the first book together and that would be Sherlock Hong and the Immortal Nightingale. And just based on the idea for this cool character, which is a young Chinese boy in Singapore in the late 1800s, and he goes around Singapore solving mysteries, um, it felt like such 
an exciting character that it actually inspired not just one book but four books so far what is a cool character how do you know you have a cool character to work with well a cool character is someone that's really fun to hang out with and really brave and funny and it's a, you feel like this is a very good friend to have if you've made up a character like that chances are people will want to read more about your story so that they could experience what it's like to be on an adventure with this character. So some questions you can ask yourself would be what inspires this character? What is she or he curious about? And what would make him or her go out of the way and do something really awesome? And so if you focus on this cool character, you will find that it's quite easy to put together some scenes and a story around it. This is another series of mine. It's called My Blade Quest. It's about two siblings, a brother and a sister. Their parents die in an accident and their parents left them a card game empire. But someone wants to destroy this empire and so the siblings have to cooperate and save the whole business themselves. So the idea that inspired this story was basically the quest which is when a hero goes out looking for something important. So these two siblings have to travel around the world and they have adventures and they make new friends and they find out about all the awesome things that their parents did back then when they were still alive. And it is the story of this quest, this journey to look for something important that makes this such an exciting series. Also with this series, I started small. Um, we had the initial idea and we did this little foldable story which contained just a short part of the first book and when people really liked it again we were encouraged to develop one book after another and now so many kids have read these books so if you want to write a quest story, you have to keep your readers cheering for your characters and at the same time, keep your readers concerned about whether the characters will indeed succeed. So this is yet another series of mine. It's called the Lion City Adventures series and there are three books. And a lot of this series is about old stories and legends of Singapore, how different parts of Singapore got their names and who were some of the famous people who lived in those areas. This one in particular is inspired by some legends and folk tales from old Singapore. And that's one very good way you can get ideas for your story, which is to base them on folk tales and legends. One thing I like to do very often, you'll find that in quite a few of my books, is to have stories within stories. So I've rewritten eight old legends from Singapore. Um, this would be legends like the Sang Nila Utama story, the Badang story, the legend of Kusu Island and so on. Someone has hidden some information in these stories, like a secret code, and the kids have to use this information to open a mysterious box. So they have to read the stories and understand the stories and find the secret message and this will give them a clue on how to open the mysterious box. So if you're writing stories, this is something you can do. Take an old legend and see how you can make this interesting today by writing about this in your own style or making small changes so that it's more interesting. This is my Super Kicks series and as you can see it's about football and it features some kids who take part in a very special football training program. Now, I've always wanted to write a book about football and I've been wanting to do this since I was 10 years old. Not because I was a very sporty guy, actually my hobbies were more like reading and eating and maybe I would try to write a few stories now and then. But actually, my cousins gave me 
a stack of football comic books um, from the UK. And these were the Tiger series of comics and Roy of the Rovers. And these comics featured serialized stories, you know, which meant that um, you get a little bit of story every week and then it would stop suddenly and you have to wait for the next issue to continue reading the story. And even though I wasn't a football fan, I was really hooked on this. Why is this so? Now, this is how you can get an idea for your story. It's because these books featured really intense feelings. People like to read books where the characters have really strong feelings about what's happening in their lives. So in the comics that I read, there were a lot of arguments between the players, whether they were friends or whether they were from another team. And sometimes the players would argue with their coaches and they would have strong feelings about that. Or they would have disagreements with their parents. Sometimes they would even have arguments within themselves, you know. Should they turn up for this game or should they not turn up for this game and they can't decide? So I used all of that as an inspiration to create my own football series. If you've ever been in a serious argument and you can sense the strong feelings that are coming up inside you, this could somehow actually be the inspiration for your story or if you have seen people displaying strong emotions you might work a story around that. This is a new series of mine. It's called the Toy Mystery Series, The Secret of the Cheddar Blocks. How this came about was that my two kids love to read, but they don't read together because they enjoy different kinds of books. But when it comes to computer games, they really collaborate and they connect. So they would discuss strategies for playing the game and they would help one another out. And so when I saw that, I realized that computer games would be a good inspiration for a series. I decided to create a game book with them. Um, a game book is a book with a branching story with different options for you to make now and then until you got to the right outcome. So as you can see at the end of uh, every chapter, there will be options for you. And depending on what you chose, you would go on to the relevant section. So it's really like a game. This book has elements of a mystery game and an adventure game and a puzzle game. And you basically need to solve the mystery. You know, someone stole the chatter blocks and you have to help to catch the thief and return the blocks. Since this book was a lot like a computer game, um, we had a chance to create a very interesting story world for the characters to live in and one of my sons did the illustrations for this on the inside also and my other son played it over and over again to test it and fix any inconsistencies and also to make it better. Computer games can be a good inspiration for your own story because kids today play a lot of games and you can really enjoy yourself thinking about this stuff. This is another game book that I've written. It's the Last Kid Running series. And this is the first book, Welcome to the Scramble. It was inspired by two friends of mine. Uh, I found out that they had created a virtual reality roller coaster. And so I went down to the office with my kids and they let us try it out. And you put on some glasses and it's like a screen in there. And because of the graphics they programmed, it really felt like we were in this big cave on a huge roller coaster, really dangerous ride. And there were dragons and big fires and all kinds of stuff around us. And it was very exciting. And so this game book was inspired by that. And it features an eccentric inventor who uses all these amazing technology to create the most incredible running challenge that kids all, of, all over the world are just crazy about. Because if you take part in this challenge and you win, you can get really famous and you win a lot of money. And on top of that, it is just incredible fun. So that's one way you can get ideas for your story by featuring futuristic technology. 
you look around at what's available, you know, the kinds of computers and gadgets and inventions, and try to think what would it be like, you know, in the future when this stuff got even more powerful and people will start to use it in really exciting ways. I love science fiction stories and I really enjoy thinking about technology and how we can all use computers you know, in, in unexpected ways. In this book, the runners are taken to an abandoned building and they wear special glasses, kind of like this, which project virtual obstacles and threats and all kinds of game challenges. You could pick any area of technology that inspires you. It could be kitchen technology or self-driving cars or even smartphones, anything, and you can come up with your own twist. Then you think about what would happen if you actually had this in your life. What amazing things would people start to do? And that can inspire a new story for you. And so these are the seven ideas that you can try. Um, one, use everything around you. Just grab all the ideas around you, everything that you see, and put them all in a story. Two, create a cool character, someone you want to hang out with, someone that's brave and funny and a really nice friend, and create adventures around this person. Three, look for something important. Maybe a quest where your characters go out and try to find something. Four, be inspired by legends and folk tales and see if you can give this a twist to make this more interesting. Five, intense feelings. A character who has very strong emotions about something and create a scenario around that. Six, computer games. What about computer games excite you or amaze you? And see if you can spin that off into a story idea. And seven, futuristic technology. Technology from the future. And uh, what kind of crazy adventures you can imagine coming from that. So how would you know if an idea is right for you? Because there are ideas everywhere and there's so many books and so many people come up with all kinds of ideas every day. Well, you'll feel that you really want to work on this idea right now. And it's like you can't wait to see what you come up with when you're done writing. And you really want to share this with your family and your friends. So if you have that feeling and it's very clear to you, then that's definitely a good idea for you to follow up on. And so that's the end of our session. If you really want to learn more about writing your own stories, you can check out this other book that I wrote. It's not um, a storybook, but it's a book about writing your own stories and using your imagination. You can find it in the libraries or you can ask your school librarian to order a copy. What you can imagine, you can create. Thank you for joining me. Hope you had a lot of fun and hope you also enjoy writing your own stories. You can follow my adventures on my website, supercoolbooks.com. I wish you happy writing, and I hope to read your stories soon. Bye!